The history of Slovenia chronicles the period of the Slovene territory from the 5th century BC to the present. In the early Bronze Age, Proto-Illyrian tribes settled an area stretching from present-day Albania to the city of Trieste. Slovenian territory was part of the Roman Empire, and it was devastated by barbarian incursions in late antiquity and early Middle Ages. Since the main route from the Pannonian Plain to Italy ran through present-day Slovenia, Alpine Slavs, ancestors of modern-day Slovenes settled the area in the late 6th century AD. In 1918, Slovenes joined Yugoslavia, while the west of the country was annexed to Italy. Between 1945 and 1990, Slovenia was under Yugoslav communist regime. The country gained its independence from Yugoslavia in June 1991, and is today a member of the European Union and NATO. Prehistory to Slavic Settlement Prehistory The earliest signs of human settlement in present-day Slovenia were found in Hell Cave in the Loza woods near Orhekin in Akarniola where two stone tools approximately 250,000 years old were recovered. During the last glacial period, present-day Slovenia was inhabited by Neanderthals. The most famous Neanderthal archaeological site in Slovenia is a cave close to the village of Sibrelj near Cirkno, where the Divya Babe flute, the oldest known musical instrument in the world, was found in 1995. In the transition period between the Bronze Age to the Iron Age, the Urnfield culture flourished. Numerous archaeological remains dating from the Hallstatt period have been found in Slovenia, with important settlements in most Narsosi, Vasa, and St. Vit pre Stigna, Novo Mesto in Lower Carniola, one of the most important archaeological sites of the Hallstatt culture has been nicknamed the City of Situlas after numerous Situlas found in the area. Ancient Romans in the Iron Age Present-day Slovenia was inhabited by Illyrian and Celtic tribes until the 1st century BC, when the Romans conquered the region establishing the provinces of Pannonia and Noricum. What is now Western Slovenia was included directly under Roman Italia as part of the ex-region Venetia A. Histria. Important Roman towns located in present-day Slovenia included Amona, Selea and Poetovio. Other important settlements were in Alportus, Nevia Dunum, Haleritum, Atrans, and Striden. During the migration period, the region suffered invasions of many barbarian armies. Due to its strategic position as the main passage from the Pannonian Plain to the Italian peninsula, Rome finally abandoned the region at the end of the 4th century. Most cities were destroyed, while the remaining local population moved to the highland areas, establishing fortified towns. In the 5th century, the region was part of the Ostrogothic Kingdom, and was later contested between the Ostrogoths, the Byzantine Empire and the Lombards. Slavic settlement The Slavic ancestors of present-day Slovenes settled in the East Alpine area at the end of the 6th century, coming from two directions, north, settling in the area of today's Carinthia and West Syria and south, settling in the area of today's central Slovenia. After Samo's death, the Slavs of Carniola again fell to Avar rule, while the Slavs north of the Karavanka range established the independent principality of Carantania, the Middle Ages. Carantania to Carinthia in 745, Carantania and the rest of Slavic populated territories of present-day Slovenia, being pressured by newly consolidated Ivar power, submitted to Bavarian overrule and were, together with the Duchy of Bavaria, incorporated into the Carolingian Empire, while Carantanians and other Slavs living in present Slovenia converted to Christianity. Eastern part of Carantania was ruled again by Avars between 745 and 795. Carantania retained its internal independence until 828 when the local princes, following the anti-Frankish rebellion of Ludovic Pozovsky, were deposed and gradually replaced by a Germanic ascendancy. 
under Emperor Arnulf of Carinthia, Carantania, now ruled by a mixed Bavarian Slav nobility, shortly emerged as a regional power, but was destroyed by the Hungarian invasions in the late 9th century. Carantania Carinthia was established again as an autonomous administrative unit in 976, when Emperor Otto I, the Great, after deposing the Duke of Bavaria, Henry II, the quarreller, split the lands held by him and made Carinthia the sixth duchy of the Holy Roman Empire, but old Carantania never developed into a unified realm. In the late 10th and beginning of the 11th century, primarily because of the Hungarian threat, the southeastern border region of the German Empire was organized into so-called marks. That became the core of the development of the historical Slovenian lands, the Carniola, the Styria and the western Gariska, Gorizia. The consolidation and formation of the historical Slovenian lands took place in a long period between 11th and 14th century being led by a number of important feudal families such as the Dukes of Spanheim, the Counts of Gorizia, the Counts of Selge and finally the House of Habsburg. Slovenes as of distinct ethnic group The first mentions of a common Slovene ethnic identity, transcending regional boundaries, date from the 16th century. During the 14th century, most of the Slovene lands passed under the Habsburg rule. In the 15th century, the Habsburg domination was challenged by the Counts of Selge. But by the end of the century the great majority of Slovene inhabited territories were incorporated into the Habsburg monarchy. Most Slovenes lived in the administrative region known as Inner Austria, forming the majority of the population of the Duchy of Carniola and the county of Gorizia and Grey Discar, as well as of Lower Styria and Southern Carinthia. Slovenes also inhabited most of the territory of the imperial free city of Trieste, although representing the minority of its population. Early modern period in the 16th century, the Protestant Reformation spread throughout the Slovene lands. During this period, the first books in the Slovene language were written by the Protestant preacher Primoz Truba and his followers, establishing the base for the development of the standard Slovene language. In the second half of the 16th century, numerous books were printed in Slovene, including an integral translation of the Bible by Juric Dalmatian. During the Counter-Reformation in the late 16th and 17th centuries, led by the Bishop of Ljubljana Thomas Kron and Sekor Martin Brenner, almost all Protestants were expelled from the Slovene lands. Nevertheless, they left a strong legacy in the tradition of Slovene culture, which was partially incorporated in the Catholic Counter-Reformation in the 17th century. The Old Slovene Orthography, also known as Bohorax Alphabet, which was developed by the Protestants in the 16th century and remained in use until the mid-19th century, testified to the unbroken tradition of Slovene culture as established in the years of the Protestant Reformation. Between the 15th and the 17th century, the Slovene land suffered many calamities. Many areas, especially in southern Slovenia, were devastated by the Ottoman Habsburg Wars. Many flourishing towns, like Vipovsky Kreis and Kostanjevica and RKRKI, were completely destroyed by incursions of the Ottoman army, and never recovered. The nobility of the Slovene inhabited provinces had an important role in the fight against the Ottoman Empire. The Carniola nobleman's army thus defeated the Ottomans in the Battle of Sizak of 1593, marking the end of the immediate Ottoman threat to the Slovene lands, although sporadic Ottoman incursions continued well into the 17th century. In the 16th and 17th century, the western Slovene regions became the battlefield of the wars between the Habsburg monarchy and the Venetian Republic. Most notably the War of Grey Discar, which was largely fought in the Slovene Gariska region. Between late 15th and early 18th century, the Slovene lands also witnessed many peasant wars, most famous being the Corinthian Peasant Revolt of 1478, the Slovene Peasant Revolt of 1515, the Croatian-Slovenian Peasant Revolt of 1573 
the Second Slovene Peasant Revolt of 1635, and the Tolmene Peasant Revolt of 1713. The late 17th century was also marked by a vivid intellectual and artistic activity. Many Italian Baroque artists, mostly architects and musicians, settled in the Slovene lands and contributed greatly to the development of the local culture. Artists like Francesco Robba, Andrea Pozzo, Vittor Carpaccio and Giulio Qualio worked in the Slovenian territory, while scientists such as Johann Wakehard von Valvasor and Johannes Gregorius Thanitscher contributed to the development of the scholarly activities. By the early 18th century, however, the region entered another period of stagnation, which was slowly overcome only by the mid-18th century, age of enlightenment to the national movement. Between the early 18th century and early 19th century, the Slovene lands experienced a period of peace, with a moderate economic recovery starting from mid-18th century onward. The Adriatic city of Trieste was declared a free port in 1718, boosting the economic activity throughout the western parts of the Slovene lands. The political, administrative and economic reforms of the Habsburg rulers Maria Theresa of Austria and Joseph II improved the economic situation of the peasantry, and were well received by the emerging bourgeoisie, which was however still weak. In the late 18th century, a process of standardization of Slovene language began, promoted by Carniolan clergymen like Marco Polan and Jurij Japolj. During the same period, peasant writers began using and promoting the Slovene vernacular in the countryside. This popular movement, known as Bukovniki, started among Corinthian Slovenes as part of a wider revival of Slovene literature. The Slovene cultural tradition was strongly reinforced in the Enlightenment period in the 18th century by the endeavors of the Zoi Circle. After two centuries of stagnation, Slovene literature emerged again most notably in the works of the playwright Anton Tomasz Linhart and the poet Valentin Vodnik. However, German remained the main language of culture, administration and education well into the 19th century. Between 1805 and 1813, the Slovene settled territory was part of the Illyrian provinces, an autonomous province of the Napoleonic French Empire, the capital of which was established at Ljubljana. Although the French rule in the Illyrian provinces was short-lived it significantly contributed to greater national self-confidence and awareness of freedoms. The French did not entirely abolish the feudal system. Their rule familiarized in more detail the inhabitants of the Illyrian provinces with the achievements of the French Revolution and with contemporary bourgeois society. They introduced equality before the law, compulsory military service and a uniform tax system, and also abolished certain tax privileges, introduced modern administration, separated powers between the state and the church, and nationalized the judiciary. In August 1813, Austria declared war on France. Austrian troops led by General Franz Tomasik invaded the Illyrian provinces. After this short French interim all Slovene lands were, once again, included in the Austrian Empire. Slowly, a distinct Slovene national consciousness developed, and the quest for a political unification of all Slovenes became widespread. In the 1820s and 1840s, the interest in Slovene language in folklore grew enormously, with numerous philologists collecting folk songs and advancing the first steps towards a standardization of the language. A small number of Slovene activists, mostly from Styria and Carinthia, embraced the Illyrian movement that started in neighboring Croatia and aimed at uniting all South Slavic peoples. Pan-Slavic and Austro-Slavic ideas also gained importance. However, the intellectual circle around the philologist Matija Kopp and the romantic poet Franz Prisiron was influential in affirming the idea of Slovene, linguistic and cultural individuality, refusing the idea of merging the Slovenes into a wider Slavic nation. 
Slovene activists demanded a unification of all Slovene-speaking territories in a unified and autonomous Slovene kingdom within the Austrian Empire. Although the project failed, it served as an almost undisputed platform of Slovene political activity in the following decades, clashing nationalisms in the late 19th century. Between 1848 and 1918, numerous institutions were founded in the so-called Slovene National Awakening. Despite their political and institutional fragmentation and lack of proper political representation, the Slovenes were able to establish a functioning national infrastructure, with the introduction of a constitution granting civil and political liberties in the Austrian Empire in 1860. The Slovene national movement gained force, despite its internal differentiation among the conservative old Slovenes and the progressive young Slovenes. The Slovene nationals defended similar programs, calling for a cultural and political autonomy of the Slovene people. In the late 1860s and early 1870s, a series of mass rallies called Tabori, modeled on the Irish monster meetings, were organized in support of the United Slovenia program. These rallies, attended by thousands of people, proved the allegiance of wider strata of the Slovene population to the ideas of national emancipation. By the end of the 19th century, Slovenes had established a standardized literary language and a thriving civil society. Literacy levels were among the highest in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and numerous national associations were present at grassroots level. The idea of a common political entity of all South Slavs, known as Yugoslavia, emerged. Since the 1880s, a fierce culture war between Catholic traditionalists and integralists on one side, and liberals, progressivists and anti-clericals dominated Slovene political and public life, especially in Carniola. During the same period, the growth of industrialization intensified social tensions. Both socialist and Christian socialist movements mobilized the masses. In 1905, the first socialist mayor in the Austro-Hungarian Empire was elected in the Slovene mining town of Idria on the list of the Yugoslav Social Democratic Party. In the same years, the Christian socialist activist Genes Evangelist Krek organized hundreds of workers and agricultural cooperatives throughout the Slovene countryside. At the turn of the 20th century, national struggles in ethnically mixed areas dominated the political and social lives of the citizenry. By the 1910s, the national struggles between Slovene and Italian speakers in the Austrian literal, and Slovene and German speakers, overshadowed other political conflicts and brought about a nationalist radicalization on both sides. In the last two decades before World War I, Slovene arts and literature experienced one of its most flourishing periods, with numerous talented modernist authors, painters and architects. The most important authors of this period were Ivan Kanka, Otone Zupinsik and Dragatine Ket, while Ivan Grohar and Rihard Jakopic were among the most talented Slovene visual artists of the time. After the Ljubljana earthquake of 1895, the city experienced a rapid modernization under the charismatic liberal nationalist mayors Ivan Rybar and Ivan Tavkar. Architects like Max Fabiani and Cyril Metidkoch introduced their own version of the Vienna Secession architecture to Ljubljana. In the same period, the Adriatic port of Trieste became an increasingly important center of Slovene economy, culture and politics. By 1910, around a third of the city population was Slovene, and the number of Slovenes in Trieste was higher than in Ljubljana. At the turn of the 20th century, hundreds of thousands of Slovenes emigrated to other countries, mostly to the United States, but also to South America, Germany, Egypt and to larger cities in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, especially Zagreb and Vienna. It has been calculated that around 300,000 Slovenes emigrated between 1880 and 1910, which means that one in six Slovenes left their homeland. Such disproportionately high emigration rates resulted in a relatively small population growth in the Slovene lands. 
comparatively to other Central European regions, the Slovene lands lost demographic weight between the late 18th and early 20th century. Emigration The period between the 1880s and World War I saw a mass emigration from the present-day Slovenia to America. The largest group of Slovenes eventually settled in Cleveland, Ohio, and the surrounding area. The second largest group settled in Chicago, principally on the Lower West Side. Many Slovene immigrants went to Southwest in Pennsylvania, Southeastern Ohio and the state of West Virginia to work in the coal mines and lumber industry. World War I World War I resulted in heavy casualties for Slovenia, particularly on the bloody soccer front in Slovenia's western border area. Hundreds of thousands of Slovene conscripts were drafted in the Austro-Hungarian army, and over 30,000 of them lost their lives during the World War I. Hundreds of thousands of Slovenes were resettled in refugee camps in Italy and Austria. Ethnic Slovenes in refugees camps led by Italy, however, were treated as state enemies, and several thousands died of malnutrition and diseases between 1915 and 1918. Entire areas of the Slovenian littoral were destroyed. After the outbreak of World War I, the Austrian parliament was dissolved and civil liberties suspended. Many Slovene political activists, especially in Carniola and Styria, were imprisoned by Austro-Hungarian authorities on charges of pro-Serbian or pan-Slavic sympathies. 469 Slovenes were executed on charges of treason in the first year of the war alone provoking a strong anti-Austrian resentment among the national-minded strata of the Slovene population. Hundreds of thousands of Slovene conscripts were drafted in the Austro-Hungarian army, and over 30,000 of them lost their lives in the course of the war. The Italian Royal Army launched an attack on Austria-Hungary in 1915 on territory populated by Slovenes. Some of the fiercest battles were fought along the Soka River and on the Kras Plateau in what is now Western Slovenia.